Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Grand Theft Auto 5 video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about 10 things that need to be changed in the Grand Theft Auto Online Smuggler's Run DLC. So I think the Smuggler's Run update is awesome, but there are a couple things that I wish Rockstar had done differently. And that's the sort of stuff that we're going to be talking about in this video today. If you would like to contribute your own suggestions that Rockstar should change, let me know in the comment section down below or on Twitter. I'd love to hear from you guys down there, but we've got a lot to talk about today, so let's not waste any more time, and let's get it started. All right, so this isn't in any particular order, but at the number one spot, hangar payouts and Ron's cuts. So this is by far the most embarrassing business as far as making money goes that Grand Theft Auto Online has ever seen. When you consider the first one we got was Finance and Felony, where a large warehouse pays out $1.5 million, and that doesn't take up that long to fill up, where the biker business is passive and is super easy to just let it grow on its own. The import export stuff is so valuable and so worth it. Uh, and then the bunker stuff is another passive income money making method. This one just seems worthless. It's just a worse finance and felony. And that's pretty much it at the end of the day. The payouts are absolutely terrible. I mean, one crate is only worth $10,000 and you can only collect four at a time. And even the bonuses you get for doing like either the top tier ones aren't even all that great. You don't even make over a million dollars. And another thing that kind of bothers me, Ron's cut What's with Ron's cut? What does Ron do to deserve a cut of our money? We don't see him on the missions. He's not flying the Hydras. He's not flying the Hunters. So what is Ron doing to deserve a cut of our money? And another thing to tie in with this, I know this is like three things in one, but the associate pay. The associates don't get paid at all. Like they get the bare minimum amount. They don't get any real bonus for helping out the president or the MC for doing the business, which to me is just a massive, massive bummer. So I wish Rockstar would have done something different as far as the payouts go. And I wish they would have made it a little bit more lucrative for everyone involved. All right, at the number two spot, and this kind of ties into payouts a little bit, but the price of everything. This is the most expensive update that Rockstar has ever introduced into Grand Theft Auto V. I mean, are you kidding me? I think the grand total for everything that's going to be involved, all the vehicles, all the content, is going to be somewhere along the lines of 80 plus million dollars. Are you kidding me? And I mean, even some of the jets in the game right now are pretty expensive. You can see the prices that I have, and most of the ones I've already unlocked the trade-in price, but they're still multi-millions of dollars. So I don't know why Rockstar has decided to make everything so expensive. I mean, the hangers are expensive when it's all said and done, upgrading them, getting them them to the way that you probably want them to. It just doesn't make sense to me why everything is so darn expensive, but it is. And it is a shame because some people will have to result to, you know, spending tons of money on shark cards or having to just constantly grind over and over again to get to the point where they want to be able to enjoy the content, which I don't think is very fun or very fair. Okay. At the number three spot, the amount of drip feeding. So I don't mind drip feeding. It does extend the life of updates. It gives us something to look forward to in the following weeks. What I have a problem with is when there's more drip feed vehicles than the actual amount of content that arrives on day one. And this has been the case for the last three updates. For Cunning Stunt Special Vehicle Circuit, it was the case. For Gun Running, it was the case. And now for this DLC, Smuggler's Run, it's the case too. So it seems as if it's getting worse and worse. The weeks are just getting extended. And it doesn't help when a lot of that uh, drip-fed stuff is incredibly expensive, tying back to the price thing that we talked about earlier. So like I said, I don't mind drip feeding, but the drip feeding in this update is way overkill and just lasts for far too long. I feel like it should have been the opposite. We should have got the majority of the content on day one and then a little bit of the content following that. Okay, at the number four spot, sourcing mission difficulty and the way that the missions go. So the missions for these, although they are interesting and they require you to do some rather unique things, that doesn't mean necessarily make them all that fun. For example, some of the sourcing missions are a huge pain in the butt. One of them, for example, is to do stunts in a plane where you have to go like under bridges in between buildings. That to me is a little, you know, out of there. Uh, there's also one where you have to follow a Titan that's literally going slower than 30 miles per hour and defend it from endless buzzards. That isn't worth $10,000 per crate. So to me, the sourcing missions are very, very difficult and the reward you get out of them is not all that great. So I guess that kind of ties back into the payout, but what's up with the sourcing missions? The import-export ones are really, really fun, but I don't really know why they had to make these 
fun, but also incredibly challenging and difficult. Uh, it just seems like they could have, you know, not made them so incredibly weird to do. Okay, moving on and up next, Rockstar seemed to mess this up in every single DLC, and that is insurance. So with this update, they added insurance on all of the new personal aircrafts. So for example, if someone is coming at you in a fighter jet and you destroy them, you're gonna have to pay for their insurance. So it seems like a lose-lose situation. What do you do? You let them kill you, or you kill them, but you end up paying the insurance even though they were in a vehicle that was designed to kill you. So I'm not exactly too sure what Rockstar wants to do here. Now granted, the insurance is only $1,000, but at the end of the day, why? Why is there even insurance at all? And you get bad sport for doing it as well. It's almost more the bad sport punishment more than anything else. To me, that makes me scratch my head just because it's like, why? They are in weaponized armored vehicles, Rockstar. We have to kill them, otherwise they're gonna kill us and they don't get punished. So uh, again, I really wish they would just figure out how to do the insurance in a way that is beneficial to both people. All right, moving on, the next thing that bothers me is the fact that we can't have more than one personal, if you can see my air quotes, vehicle out at a time. So what I mean by that is Rockstar added the new personal aircraft feature, and that's amazing. I think it's a great one. However, you can't have a personal aircraft out at the same time you have a personal vehicle out. So why? There are two different types of vehicles. You have car and aircraft. Why can't we have them both out at the same time? I would use my vehicle to transport myself to the aircraft, and then once I'm done with the aircraft, I'd like to go back to my vehicle. But Rockstar says they can't be out at the same time, so that right there is a little bit disappointing, unfortunately, because like I said, that's a great new feature that Rockstar added, but the fact that we can't utilize both at the same time, that just doesn't make sense to me. All right, the next thing that kind of bothers me is the awkward hangar storage. So I like the fact that Rockstar allows us to move around our jets and our airplanes, but the way they classify the vehicles is kind of weird. Small, medium, and large, and each one of them takes up a different space in the hangar. And when you try and fit your vehicles in there, it's almost like a game of musical chairs. You're trying to like, you know, put this jet there so that that one will fit there. And it's kind of awkward. And you also don't know if placing a vehicle will end up deleting one of the other ones and moving it back into storage. There needs to be like an indicator on the screen that says, if you put this jet here, this other one will have to be moved back into storage. But none of them have that. You just, it's kind of like a guessing game. And I don't really like that. I wish that Rockstar would either clarify this a little bit or just make the storage uh, system a little bit better because in my opinion, it's just a little ridiculous to have to like guess and try and go back and forth from storage to the floor. So again, that would be an improvement that I would definitely make. Okay, moving on, something else I don't absolutely love about the hangar is the fact that we can't store our personal vehicles in there. Why not? We can store our personal vehicles in the bunker, and I love that feature, just driving up to the bunker door and having my personal car go inside. The hangar is plenty big enough to allow uh, for storage of personal vehicles that they could fit right up in the front where none of the other planes go, or they could go in the back where none of the planes are either towards that kind of secondary garage door. So this would have been incredibly nice because I would use my hangar to just drive straight in, to get away from people, to get away from cops, but you have to like park it next to it, you have to get out outside. You have to worry about getting run over by planes and other people. So I'm not sure why this isn't the case. It, it seems like it would have been a very, very easy thing for them to do, especially because they did it with the bunkers. And it would have been cool to see some of my favorite vehicles right next to some of my favorite aircrafts as well. It could have been for some great snapmatics, but overall just some cool moments as well. So I'm not sure why they didn't decide to implement that with the hangars. Okay, this next thing is actually something I wish they had done with the majority of the new vehicles. And that is a feature that actually happens when dropping bombs. So when you're going into the bombing camera, it's kind of difficult to tell where the bombs are going to land. They almost need like a, an indicator that appears on the map, something that's kind of similar to what happens in Just Cause 3. Because for example, when you're in the bomb camera mode, it goes into autopilot, which can move you higher or lower. That will affect where your bombs land. And it is kind of tricky to tell sometimes either how high you are or, you know, if you drop your bombs, are they going to land in three seconds or five seconds or seven seconds? So I wish that Rockstar would do that. I wish that they would add a little indicator that shows you where they will land if you release it right now. It would make it a little bit more accurate and it would make it a little bit more usable too. And at least for me, I haven't been killed by anyone with a bomb, so maybe it's hard to use, maybe it's easy, maybe it's difficult, I'm not sure, but an indicator would definitely be nice. All right, and the final thing today, and I feel like I say this with every update, but the fact we can't do this in solo lobbies or private lobbies or invite-only lobbies or friend sessions. So with Gunrunning and Smuggler's Run, 
Grand Theft Auto Online free mode sessions have turned into an absolute war. It is a griefer's paradise where it basically just favors anyone that's looking to kill and doesn't really have an objective to go for. So the fact that it, we still can't do these in private lobbies is very disappointing for me because it, it's tough sometimes when you have the entire lobby that just decides you are the target and that's it. And there is no other objective. It's just griefer city all over the place, especially with these new jets and even with the countermeasures we got in gun running. Sometimes when you're focusing on an objective like delivering packages, it's just impossible to try and get done. But I don't think Rockstar is ever going to change in their ways. They are pretty set in stone about keeping this in public lobbies. But at the end of the day, I am still enjoying the Smuggler's Run update. These are just some of the things that I wish Rockstar would have changed and would have done differently. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. Let me know what are some of the things you would do differently in this update and that you would change. You can either let me know in the comment section or on Twitter. If you guys did go and enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And also, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.